started the fact that we we met the Beatles when we went to the Star Club with Jim Vincent, and that was our first professional gig. Was back in Jim Vincent around the corner of England and going to the Star Club. And when we met them, they were just the backing band um, in the Star Club. They, you know, no one had sort of really heard of them. They were just one of five or yeah. six. Yeah. Liverpool groups, but um, I always remember Paul McCartney being very nice and taking us around the British Seamers Mission because yeah. he said you can get a cheap, cheap cup of tea and egg and chips around here. Yeah, but it was it was always a nice chat with those kids, and so we kind of met them through that, and then eventually we got signed up by Brian Epstein, and we were part of the Nems stable of things, which yeah. is kind of how it came round for them picking us to play on their Good Morning because they wanted the sound that we did with Little Richard. Yeah. You know, we had this very big saxophone sound with two baritones and a tenor. Yeah. Um, at the time, I think we had a few extra brass instruments yeah. where we had two trombones and a French horn. So anyway, we dragged these lads along and um, they spent most of the time, I think they spent about three hours sh showing us the rest of their record, didn't they? Playing them yeah. um, what they'd already recorded, saying, what do you think of this lad? Yeah. Well, wasn't that after the recording? I remember Paul sitting on top of a filing no, cabinet. No, that was when he was trying to get some ideas together. Oh, <laughs> Trying to get some ideas together. I, I know that. I mean, they they had laid down the rhythm track uh, on the previous evening, and we we had to sort of do the orchestration in the studio, which was uh, I mean, there was plenty of time, but it was pretty fraught experience, wasn't it? To, to it's do. a very difficult song to play. Play, yeah. At length, bars. Bars, yeah. yeah. But uh, afterwards, uh, George Martin said. Uh, Oh, do you want to come up and listen to the stuff we put down yesterday? And it was during the day in the life. That, I can't remember how. I read the newspaper last night. Or, read the news today, oh boy. Oh, yeah, they read the news today. And he goes on about it. It was all about the Guinness I uh, got killed in a car crash. And then there was another thing about there was 2,000 holds in... Blackburn, Lancashire. Yeah. I wonder who put the count them or something. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the words exactly. But, uh, so he mentioned this to John, he said, oh, you know, that was a bit, of, funny enough, it was a bit in, in, in the newspaper the last evening about that. And John said, yeah, I wrote the words in the taxi on the way to the studio. But it's when you consider that where he lived was only two miles away from, from John, from Abbey Road. Uh, so <laughs> that was a bit of a jolt, wasn't it? Well, yeah, I was at Sotheby's um, probably 20 years ago, and the, uh, the, the sheet of battered old exercise book paper mm. came up for sale with a plastic bag and it went for like thirty thousand pounds yeah you know? I know. it's very collectible beetle beetle's memorabilia isn't it? yeah mm. uh, yeah so we went and played and mm. we we had enormous trouble getting it right if you remember mm. because oh, we yeah. had that yeah, it was, uh, yeah, but, but it worked. <laughs> it worked, yeah. And, and what's, what, what's strange about that now, looking back, it's become our greatest claim to fame, in fact, isn't it? <laughs>